no, I was in the car. I was on the way over here in the car, and I just got so excited because, you know, when the devil is tormenting you for so long, sometimes it gets tiring. But when God gives you strength, you know, it gets me so excited that I could just turn around and slap the devil in his face. Wow. And one of the things is that, forgive me, because I, I, for some reason I wasn't expecting to preach tonight. But, and I forgot my main weapon, my word, my Bible at home, but I'm grateful that I have a phone that I can bring it tonight. And before I go in and, you know, and pray, because on, on so all today I was on live with Mama Marco, and I was just sharing with all these people how God loves them, you know. I think people have an, un an understanding of how good God is and how merciful and how his grace never runs dry, how he loves us without measures. And you know, tonight, or tonight I'm coming forth and uh, the devil's going to be so mad at me because I'm coming. Um, Paul, he has a strong desire to serve Jesus Christ no matter what. And as I have this strength, he has a desire to serve Jesus Christ no matter what. And he wants to share with the people how to serve Jesus Christ no matter what. And, you know, that's my desire in my heart to share with you guys the desire that I have in my heart to fight on, to go against every force that the enemy is plotting against my life, against my future, against my home. And so before I go in, um, I have a, a scripture, and it says, um, now, I'm also speaking to the youth because I'm close to you guys. I'm close to all the people, but I'm coming for the youth because the enemy is angry that the youth has been coming to my home. And, you know, it's God's been showing me how they pick up little pieces and they take it back to their houses to break up the things that the enemy has in their household. And the enemy is so angry. And, you know, he's been coming to my household and I have to, we have to stay prayed up. And one thing that God's been showing me is the power of unity. Normally we pray in our rooms and we are divided, but we still pray God has to say, no, a house divided against itself will not stand. And when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. And so I need your, I need you to be, to have your family in, in unity. And so the word that I have today, it says, you are from God, little children, and have overcame, have overcome them. Because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. First John chapter 4, verse 4. Um, before I pray, I'm praying. Father, Lord God, I come to you through your son, Jesus Christ, Lord God, and I thank you, Lord God, for allowing me to be here today, Lord God. I thank you for using me, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for my church home, Lord God. I thank you for Apostle Margo, Lord God. I thank you for Apostle Titi, Lord God. I thank you for Mama Irma, Lord God. I thank you for my mom. I thank you, Lord God, for everybody that you have placed in my life, Lord God, to shape and mold me, Lord God. Not only to shape and mold me, Lord God, but I thank you for putting them in my life to love on, Lord God. Father, Lord God, please forgive us for all of our sins, the ones that we know and the ones that we don't, Lord God. Come into our hearts, Lord God, and change our hearts. Come into our minds and change our minds. Come into our life and change our life. I speak to the atmosphere, Lord God. I speak to every demonic force, Lord God. I come against every demon, Lord God, every spirit, Lord God. I call it by its name when I say you have to fall at the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. I speak to the spirit of distraction, Lord God. I speak to the spirit of hurt, Lord God. I speak to the deaf and dumb spirit, Lord God, to hold your people bound, Lord God. Your word says, he who has an ear, let him hear, Lord God. So I pray over your people, Lord God, and I pray that they have an ear, Lord God, to hear your voice, Lord God. Father, Lord God, I come against every spirit, Lord God, that is not of you, Lord God, that is attached itself to me, Lord God, to your people, Lord God, that is trying to enter this church home, Lord God. I speak to every demonic curse, Lord God, every stronghold, Lord God, everything that is not of you, Lord God. I denounce and I destroy and I bind it down to the feet of Jesus, Lord God. Father, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit dwells here in this temple, Lord God, that these people get an understanding, Lord God. Go into their temples, Lord God. Give them an understanding, Lord God. Let them fight on, Lord God, and let them know that the enemy has no legal authority over their life, Lord God, that they will suffer no more, Lord God. Instead, they will arise, Lord God, and they will put on the armor of God, Lord God, and they will pick up their weapons of light, and they will press on, and they will get stronger in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord God, I pray that you speak through me, Lord God. Have your way through me. Let your Holy Spirit flow through me, Lord God. Align my mind with your mind, with my, uh, my align my tongue with your tongue, Lord God. And every word that comes out of my mouth, Lord 
God, let it touch the hearts and the minds of your people. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 So I, I come, lately I've been getting spiritually attacked because the enemy knows that I'm, I'm, I'm getting strengthened up. You know, the, the word of God is my, is my gym. It's my gym. It's my weights. And you know, not only there's not it's not only my weights, but the things that I go through. A lot of people go through things and they feel like they get weaker from it. But I'm here to tell you that the things that you go through, they strengthen you up. They're there to equip you so that when you go on into the battlefield, and it's, it's this season where God is making people stronger before he makes them happy. Because what good is it to be happy and you go out onto the battlefield and you don't know how to fight, but you know how to sit there and smile. That's not going to do you no good. So before God can make you happy, he's going to take you through these places to strengthen you up. And it doesn't feel good to work out, you know. It doesn't feel good to lift weights and run and all that. But God is strengthening you up because as the devil knows that his time is near, that he's going to have to fall and bend his knee and confess to God, okay, I've done evil. But before he does that, he's trying to take out everybody. Every chance he gets while you're laughing, while you're watching TikTok, the youth, while you're see, while you're singing these songs, while you're doing things that is so out of line with the spirit, the enemy is there waiting for you to pick up that phone. He's waiting for you to slip up, to take your eyes off of God so that he can come in and destroy you. The enemy, I've been feeling the pressure outside of my home, how strong and how angry he is. And every, okay, the people that you know, aren't so close to God. He's still attacking them. He's just not letting them feel it as hard as when you when you start to draw close to God and when you start reading your word and you and he you start to find out that you have power that God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but He gave you a spirit of, of power. He gave you power to go out to in the dark places to tell to speak to demons and say, "I denounce and I destroy you." And once the enemy finds out, once he finds out that you finding out the stuff about yourself that you're going to go back and destroy him he gets angry with you yeah. and he calls his he calls his angels he calls his friends he says you know what look when they're slipping up in their house while they're watching these things i need you to slip in and i need you to go like a serpent like a thief in the night he says i'm gonna go in their home i need you to break up their family oh you can give them division the give them division the give them hurt and you know, take away, take this person out their life so they can hurt and grieve and just turn away from God. But the, if you were so in tune with the Spirit, if you stayed prayed up and you kept your house um, guarded by the Word of God, the enemy couldn't go in. He can only stand out. The enemy cannot curse you. You can only curse yourself by the things that you do. You have to be sober-minded because the enemy is plotting on your downfall. But I've come to let you know, like we're coming in, you know, we're weak, out of shape. But when I'm, co I'm coming in, everybody's coming in, you know, a little bit bent out of shape. But as we step into this new year, I plan to get stronger. I plan to win battles, not to just let the battles win over me, but to actually fight to be equipped to the woman of God that I'm supposed to be. Because uh, we're obedient when we do the things that we're supposed to do. When we read the word of God, we can uplift somebody else. And when I came here in this church home, I felt that there's a lot of people who've been bound. A lot of people have been stuck in these, in these situations, whether it's a situation with your family, whether it goes way back. So when you were a baby, whether it's something that you're worried about for your future, the enemy is trying to hold you right here because he doesn't want you to know that you can win over him. He doesn't want you to know that when you speak the name of Jesus Christ, that he has to fall, that he has to flee. He doesn't want you to know that when you resist him, he has to flee. He doesn't want you to know that you have authority over authority and dominion over him. He doesn't want you to know the yeah. truth. But I've come here to warn you about what the enemy has. But I, I'm, I come to warn you about what the enemy has against you. But I'm, I'm not trying to put fear into you. I'm trying to tell you it's time to wake up. You're no long, It's no longer to sit around and come to church and pray because you're told to pray. It's no longer to come to church and come up to the altar and get prayed for because you don't do it at home for yourself. It's not time to worship. 
worship because that's what everybody does. That's what worship is for. No, it's time to worship because you have a relationship. What The posture that you have in the earthly realm could be a, a posture in the heavenly realm for your win. When you sit down on your knees and you worship God, this is a, a posture in the heavenly realm. That, you know, that could be a win. While, while we're sitting here lagging, there's, there's, a, there's a spiritual realm and there's a, there's a heavenly realm and there's an earthly realm. And what you do, I spoke this on live, what you do, Mama Margo asked me, she said, well, how do you, what, what do you do when God tells you no? And I, you know, I understand, I, I, know, I don't just, I, I want people to understand that I've been through things. So when I speak on things, I'm not just speaking my mind, I'm speaking out of experience. Because I have an understanding of what it feels like when God says no. I have an understanding when it's, when it's so silent, you feel like God has left you. I understand what it feels like when it is quiet and you're praying and you're like, God, are you still here with me? Did I do something wrong? Are you still here for me? Are you just going to leave me in this battle? No, the fact is, is that God is carrying you. It says a teach when 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 it says when it's quiet and you, it goes back to when it goes back to school when you're taking your test. The teacher doesn't speak; it gets silent. God is testing your faith. He's testing to see if what you're gonna do is right and if it's gonna be faithful. If it's righteous, I have an understanding to know what it feels like to be broken. I have an understanding to feel like what it feels to be high and to be low. So when I preach, I'm not just preaching my mind and I'm not just going off of what everybody else told me. I'm preaching after what I've been through. And so I'm here to tell you that I fought battles. You know, whether I, whether I lost them or whether I won, I, I always learned a lesson out of what I've been through. And I've come to tell you that a lot of people, a lot of soldiers are feeling defeated. A lot of soldiers who should be on the front lines are lagging in the back because they feel like they can't win. Because they feel like they don't have what it takes. And I'm here to tell you that that's a lie. That God says, "You greater is he who is living in me than he who is in the world. I've come to tell you to wake up. It's no longer time to sit around and dance on your phone and go try to build a relationship with somebody else, but you can't even build a relationship with God the Father. Because when the world ends, when it, when it all comes down to the time when God comes back for his people, that person that you're looking for, that you're trying to get their attention, is not going to be standing there with you on the day of judgment when God says, I, when your life is about to snitch on you and you just says, look at the seeds that are in your life. That person is not going to be there with you to say, well, uh, you should have repented. No, you knew better. The word of God says, it is, it is plain to these people that God is for real. It is plain to these people. He says in the end times, they will turn what is good and they will say it is evil. They're already doing that. They're already, why can't people wake up? Because they're so caught up in disciples. What everybody else is doing, what religion is doing. They're so caught up. And they said, well, I go to church. I pray. I worship. I do everything that a Christian is supposed to do. But do you do everything what a disciple of Jesus Christ does? Oh, do you do? Do you go out in the dark places and when somebody tells you something, they call you out your name? Do you do what Christians do? What what Christians do is you know they have they have the spirit of compromise. And so what religion tells you to do is that you can open your Bible. You can open your Bible, and it will tell you. It will tell you. To don't use your tongue to build, to break others down. Instead, to lift them up. Yes. But what religion will do is they'll compromise it. They'll say, well, I just told her to shut up. I just told her to shut up. That shouldn't break her. No, that's not true. That's really not sin. But what... And the word of God is not here to compromise. It's here to tell you, change. Change yourself. How can you how can you go to heaven and spend eternity with God, but you can't spend five minutes with him? How can you go out and touch the people, but you can't even let God touch your heart? How can you go and come to church and worship, but you don't bring your worship with you? You have to be, you have to see other people worship to worship. You have to see other people pray to pray and this is not the time to do what everybody else is doing because just like Paul he was a slave to Jesus Christ set apart for the gospel of God you are set apart for the gospel of God you have a calling on your life and you can't pray like everybody else prays because you are set apart for the gospel of God you can't worship like everybody else because you are set apart for the gospel of God you can't think like everybody else because you are set apart for the gospel of God. You can't even live like everybody else because you are set apart for the gospel of God. Everybody.
everybody wants. Everybody Come wants on. a white picket fence of life. But the, God, the word of God says, I came to this earth and they hated me. They for all think they killed Come Jesus Christ. On. What do you think they're going to do for you? God says it's not going to be easy. But take heart, I overcome the, the earth. Oh. I can overcame it. And if I did it, you can too. If I can love these people who hated me and betrayed me, you can too. The word of God says I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. If God gives me strength to love somebody who has hurt me, and the thing is, it's, I'm not saying that it's easy because it is extremely hard. But the way that God has to show me is that the same way God had to love me when I turned my back to him, when I was cursing his name, when I was destroying my purpose, when I was doing things that were hindering our relationship, the same way, this is the same way that I had to love somebody else who was hurting me because I once was that person who hurt God too. And you want to know what he did? He never left me. He never forsake me. He never said I'm through with you. He never said I'm gonna, I, you know what, I don't care about you. He, he never did that. Instead, he gave me multiple chances. It says his grace and his mercy is new every morning. So every morning that you get up, you have a second chance to step on the devil's head. You have a second chance to tell the devil what it is and what it ain't. You have a chance to tell the devil, look, this is my life. You have no legal authority over my life. You have no legal authority over my relationship with God. You have no legal authority over my household. But the thing is, is that if the devil can't get you with the, if he can't get you with your relationship, he'll put distractions in your life and he'll put songs. He'll, 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 he'll we're a three-part being. We learned this back in the youth. You know, we have our we have our flesh, which is our body parts. We have our soul, which is our mind, our will, and our emotions. And that's the main thing that the devil calls for. Because if he can get you in your feelings, then you can go and turn on some worldly music. And I fell victim to that once. I used to when I would got when I would get real sad, I would go and I would turn on some music because it just made me feel good. But little did I know that music was cursing me to be even more sad, so that I could draw far away. From from God because sin separates us from God. Yes. So if I could curse myself and if I could and speak things over my life that are going to make me further away from God, then the enemy can have me bound. But it's about waking up. It's about saying, you know what devil, I had enough. I had enough of you attacking my health. You know what? It's time for me to stomp on your head. It's time for me to tell you I, I have the right to get rid of you. I have good health. I am this. I am more than a conqueror. I am the apple of his eye. You no longer, I am no longer bound to the things that you say I am bound to. I am no longer the things that you say I am, but I know who God says I am. That song um, I was listening to, John Ramirez, and he says, you got to tell the devil your, your war song. And, you know, the devil will try to put fear into me. He'll try to tell me everything I'm not. He's going to try to tell me, you know, how are you going to go out on social media? How are you going to speak to these people? How? They always twist and turn things. But, you know, I have to put on my word, my, my war song, and I have to tell that devil, I know who God says I am. I know where God says I am. I'm working in power. I'm moving. I'm working miracles. I have to tell that devil what it is and what it ain't. And one thing that it ain't is what you say it is. It's what God says it is. If God tells me to go out and open my mouth for these people, then I'm going to go out and open my mouth for these people. The only thing is, is that the word of God says, he who has an ear, uh, he who has an ear, let him hear. Who are you listening to? Who are you letting, who are you letting in your ear and telling you these things? Is it the doctors? Are the doctors telling you, oh, so-and-so is so bad they're not going to make it? Or is it God who says, I will make a way. I will make a way for you. Seek my face and I will make a way for you. Trust in me and I will make a way for you. Is it the devil saying, oh, you have a past that is not going to let you go so close to God? Oh, what your father did to you. You know what? You're so, you're, you're so weak, you can't even come to God. But that's not the truth. God will take what is weak and he will lift it up and he will make it strong. The same way he could do for Moses. The Moses was, my mom was telling us how she has Bible characters uh, like assigned to us. And one thing that I didn't know about uh, Moses is that he had a stuttering problem. Moses was insecure. He said, God, how can you use me to lead these people? But if God can use a mur if God can use murderers, if God can use people who turn their backs to him, 
to, to serve the gospel, to give us people to look up to. Because right now, we're so caught up in what the world says. Ooh, look at Beyonce. Look at Nicki Minaj. Look at all them. But what are they doing to get into the kingdom of heaven? What are they doing? We're, our life... Our life has a time span on it. It's about the afterlife. Well, we're going to go after our life is in. As a matter of fact, it's about what we do in between. My mom made a point. She said, it's about in between. When on, your, on your death stone, you have a date that you are born and a date that, you are, that, you're, that you're dead. And it's about that little line in between. What did you do in between? Did you do what God called you to do? Or did you let the devil snatch it up from you? And did you spend eternity in hell? And a lot of people say, I heard a lot of people who have been to hell, and they said the first thing that they say is when they get there is that I don't belong here because you don't. I see people who... And I fell victim to making my own God because I didn't spend a lot. I didn't spend a lot of time with the master, and I began to make this my God. But God had to wake me up, and He had to say, "Look what you're connecting to. What you wonder why all this stuff is happening to? Well, look what you're spending all your time on. You're wondering why you're feeling like this. Look who you're connected to. But if you connected to me, if you invited yourself in me, then all things will work out for your good. But you keep going back." to the thing that the enemy wants you to be bound to, to blind you. And the thing about it is, is that a lot of people in here don't even know their purpose. They have it in them, but it needs to be pulled out. But that, so a lot of people want people to pull it out of them. You have to pray because not everybody can pull it out. It has to be a desire within yourself to serve God. It has to be a desire. If you want, if you feel like you don't have the desire, say, God, give me a desire. All God asks for is that you speak to him, that you build a relationship with him, a friendship for all he cares. When you're on the phone with your friend and you be like, yeah, girl, I want that car. It's the same, it's the same thing God, he says, build a relationship with me. Have me on, have, let me be on speed dial for you, and I will come through. I will come through for you. When the enemy is attacking you, I will come and I will set the standard for you because he cannot. The, the enemy, it says, the enemy can't curse what is blessed. He cannot curse what is blessed, and if you knew how blessed you were, you wouldn't let the devil treat you like a piece of dirt. No, you, you wouldn't let the devil get get away with hurting your family. You wouldn't let the devil let these little boys ruin your purpose. You wouldn't let the devil let women steal you from your the, the men of God that you're supposed to be. If you knew your purpose in, in God, you wouldn't let what the what other people say about you hinder your your purpose. And I had to understand that because. I was falling short. I was falling short, and I began to listen. At first, my spirit man was telling me. My spirit man was telling me because the enemy was trying to tell me that I was a failure, that I wasn't going to make it. He was trying to tell me that, look, if everybody else can get it, but you can't get it. What makes you think that you're going to make it? And, you know, at first I was like, man, you don't know what God has in store for me. God says he has a purpose, a plan for my life, a plan to give me hope and not to harm me, but to give me a future. So you don't dictate how my future is. You only dictate what I let you dictate, and I don't let you dictate nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. And so as I, as I, you know, I began to get lower, but, you know, as I was going through this season, I forgot the way back I prayed. I said, God, I want to grow in you. I said, God, if everything that is hindering my relationship, if it does not bear fruit, I pray that you uproot that thing and bind it down to the feet of Jesus. Whatever branch does not bear fruit, cut it off. Whatever friendship does not bear fruit, cut it off. Whatever I'm connected to that does not bear fruit and hinders my relationship with you, cut it off. So when I came to this season where it felt like I had nobody, when it felt like I was just there by myself, when I was just sinking, it felt like the ocean was just so it's just sinking, like just swallowing me up. But I forgot that I had a father in heaven who will never leave me. He will be, <coughs> he will be there with me. Can I open this water? You can. Sure. I'm sorry. <coughs> that's not a Baptist thing. That's a water thing. Amen. <laughs> I got thirsty. Yeah. And so as I was going through this season, and I was getting, I was falling into depression, to be honest. And I just felt like giving up on everything. I felt like I couldn't make it. I felt like I wasn't strong enough anymore. Yes, I fought battles in my past, but nothing was like this one that I was up against. Because this time I actually felt alone. 
in a room full of people, I felt like I was only there by myself. But because the enemy was up in my ear, and I, as soon as I, I, the lower I got, the lower I got, you know, I began to listen and I would, I would begin to lose hope. But I'm grateful that I serve a God who loves me in my brokenness, who sees me hurting. And he says, he will sit on the edge of your bed and he will say, I'm still here for you. What are you doing? It's okay to hurt. And it's okay to feel a certain way, but it's about what you're going to do after those feelings pass. Are you going to stay? Are you going to let the devil keep you bound here? Are you going to let that spirit continue to torment you? Or are you going to turn around? And are you going to kill it? Are you going to sever it? And so I was, I was feeling, see, a lot of people will be like, well, you don't know what it feels like to be depressed. You don't know what it feels like to go through this. But I understand. I know I may, I may not have to go through everything that you've been through, but I have an understanding. And so as I was going through this season, the enemy was trying to use everything against me. And if he couldn't get me with my schoolwork, then he would try to use my family and to try to turn them against me, to hinder me. And deep down, because I still had a relationship, a connection with the Father, the Father and my spirit man was telling me, what are you doing? You know, when you come to a point where you're so low, you know, it, you got to ask yourself, like, what am I really doing? What is... What is all this coming to? How am I going to get myself out of it? Now, whether you know how, then you're going to still ask, question yourself, like, what, are you, what am I doing here? Uh -huh. And so as I was coming to this place, God had to show me that in the beginning, I had to, I said, God, let me grow. Grow me. Equip me. If you have to cut things off, but I forgot that I prayed that prayer. And so I wrote it down in the back, and it says, don't expect, ask, don't, don't expect, um, don't ask God to grow and don't ex and then not expect rain. If you're asking God to grow, how is a flower going to grow without rain? How is it going to grow? You know, it's, it's all fun and games when we got nothing but sunlight. But if you have all sunlight, you're going to dry up. You're going to dry up and crumble. But you got to expect some rain, some rain to get rid of some toxic things, to get rid of toxic things, toxic things so God can purify you and lift you up and grow you. And a lot of, a lot of people feel like they've been in the rain too long. Well, you know what? Maybe you're not just going to be some flower. Maybe you're going to be a, like a, a, not a, a, not a flower. You're going to be something to where when it's the storm comes, you know, you can stand tall. And when God tells you to move, you're going to be able to bend. You won't break, but you'll be able to bend. When the enemy comes in like a flood and it's going to come at you, God says, bend over a little bit so that the flood can flow, flow right past you. So that when that enemy comes, you can be able to stand firm back on and keep pressing forward. So when, when God takes you through a, a time and a place where you feel like you just can't get up, you just can't do it. God says, come to me. And if you, even if you come to him, you will find rest. He says, come to me all who are weary and I will give you rest. When the enemy is taunting you from your, from your sleep, because I've been getting tormented from my sleep. And that's another thing that God had to show me in unity, because last night the enemy was so angry. You know, I was preaching to my sisters about Paul. And then we, we were closing out our, our, um, our Bible study and the enemy came in that fast. You know, so fast, and then we began to argue. And I was like, no, go sleep on the bed with mom. Go sleep over there. I don't want you to sleep on here with me. And then, you know, that spirit of pride automatically came in. But then God convicted me in my heart. He says, no, I need, I was like, I just want her to understand when I say no, it means no. And he said, well, you got to understand that too before she can understand it. Uh -oh. And I was like, okay, well, you know what? Then you go convict her heart of pride. So she came back in because God convicted her heart of being prideful. And then my sister said something and she went back out. And I said, you know what, lion devil? And as I was praying, that dark shadow, the mama Margot said that we, you know, that see that dark shadow was in the corner of the room. And I was like, okay, am I tripping? But then my mom called that spirit out. And she said, uh-uh, you get out of my room. You get out. And then as we, as we, uh, as she was praying, I said, come here, we got to pray in unity. And normally we would just, the four of us would pray. I said, uh-uh, we got to go down and get naughty because the enemy was outside of the house. He let one spirit slip in, but I was able to see with my cousin. It was just me and my cousin. And Mama Marco has said, these spirits are attacking them, and they're attacking them hard. And so that night when I went to sleep in my prayer closet, I was able to see this, this same spirit. It just changed its shape. 
It just changed the way it looked, and it was standing in my closet. It couldn't go into my prayer closet, so it was standing a little bit outside of my prayer closet. And it was just waiting. Waiting. I said, uh-uh, I denounce and I destroy you before I go to sleep. I fell asleep, and then I woke back up, and God said, call it by its name. Sometimes when the enemy comes and you can recognize the spirit, you gotta call it by its name. Because if you don't call it by its name, it's gonna get familiar in your temple. It's gonna get familiar and feel like it could come. And when you when you when you let it familiar in your temple, it's gonna say, Come on, friends, look, she let me in. It's a party in this temple. It's a party. It's a party going on in this temple. Oh, she over here licking. She operating on this trip. Go get her kids too. Go get her husband. Go get her house. Come on, it's a party up in this house. But you gotta call it by its name. Call it by his name and denounce and destroy. Because yes. God says, I gave you power to destroy those things. I gave you power. The word of God says you have the power to destroy strongholds. So as I called this spirit by his name, I said, I denounce the spirit of Jezebel. I denounce the spirit of division. I denounce the spirit of disobedience. And then I have, God said, touch your cousin. I touched my cousin. I said, I denounce every spirit. And the enemy was so angry with me. He was like, I was able to see that in my vision. I said, okay. I said, okay, I fell back to sleep. The second time I woke back up, my toe was hurting me so bad. And I was like, why is my toe hurting me? And then he said, call it by his name. Call it by his name. I said, the python spirit, the spirit of darkness, the spirit of fear. I was calling these spirits out, and I could feel the angriness of the enemy arise. And I said, you know what, God? I said, God, I command every angel to stand at every corner of my house. Guard my house. And then I fell back to sleep. And the third time I woke up, God says, they're here. And I could feel the presence. I could feel the pressure standing outside of my house because they couldn't make their way in. I could feel the pressure outside of my house because it says the enemy will come in like a flood, but the spirit of the Lord was inside of my house holding the standard that they couldn't come into my house. They could only stand out. And so I said, okay. He said, call it by its name. I said, I speak to that spirit. And he said, I was calling the spirits out. I was calling them. And he said, touch my cousin. He said, touch my sin. I touched my sin in his chest. And I said, the homosexual spirit, I come against you. And the enemy was so angry with me, so angry that the I could feel the pressure in my chest. And right before I was going to lay down, he said, uh-uh. You go get covered. Go cover yourself. So I went in my mom's room. I said, the same spirits that are tormenting my sin, they're tormenting me. I need you to cover me. And because my mom is so aligned with the spirit, she said, I know I wasn't able to sleep neither. And so as we prayed, and she said, you know what? I wonder if soul ties works with, if soul ties are the same things what you connect yourself to. It's the same thing like when you connect yourself with apps. They ask you, do you want to connect to this friend? Do you want to connect to this? Do you want to connect to that? It's like a contract. So when you connect yourself to these things, it can weigh you down. Weigh you down low enough so the enemy can grab you in his reach. But if you watch out and if you're sober-minded to the things that you connect to, then the enemy won't, you won't be in his reach. He can only stand so close. He can only stand outside of your home, but he can't make it into your home. He can't make it, the only way he can make it into your home is when you give him authority to go in your home. When you act outside of the spirit, when you act in your flesh, and when you act in your emotions that are not of God, when you when you let the desires of what you want to do, it's the same thing with Adam and Eve. They wanted to eat the, they didn't want to inherit the the, the land with God. They wanted to do it on their own. And you know, because God is a God of free will, and he says, I want you to choose. I want you to choose. You choose me, or you choose what you want. You choose me, or you choose these things. And because they chose themselves, because they chose what they wanted, they let the enemy have authority. And that's when they, they all of humanity was doomed. But through Jesus Christ, when, who we can choose to surrender to, to humble ourselves, because it says in Christ, all man is a new creation. If we go through Christ, we are a new creation. That means whatever happened in our past, it doesn't define us who, it doesn't define us anymore. It may shape us, it may mold us, like just the Apostle T.T. had to tell me, you know, some things that you went through, like 2,000 years ago when Jesus got beat, we didn't forget his beatings. We can't forget the things that happened to us, the beatings that happened to us. We have to, you know what? Okay, those things did happen to me, but they're making me stronger. Yes. Those things did happen to me. Those things did happen in my past life, but I learned from it. I'm going to go about it a different way now. This time I'm going to go about it.
got it with God. And I'm going to let him do it. I'm going to let him fight for me. I'm going to let God do what he has to do for me. And the enemy can't stand that because he cannot go against God. He has to go before him. He can't even go before him because what God has in store for you, no man can touch. What God has in store with you, the enemy can't get it unless you give it to him. Come on. And the enemy is going to be so angry with me tonight because I'm going to tell you, when you, go, when you walk out of this building, put on your armor of God. When you walk out of this building, be sober-minded. When you go out into this building, you go out into this dark place, remember the God who we serve and remember the God who is after you. Not to put fear, but to put... Um, Not the truth. Uh, to help. But to put... Knowledge, because the, the word of God says for my people who perish for a lack of knowledge. To let you know that as you go out and you're and you're gonna build, you are. I'm telling you now, you are going to build a relationship with the Father. You are gonna get it right. When you feel like you can't worship, that you don't have a prayer life, I speak it now, you are going to. And as I close this out, I want you to know that the enemy has no authority over your life. He has no authority over your health. He has no authority over your future, over your family, over your kids, over your marriages, over your life, over your job. He has no authority, no power. And as I close this, as I close out, I just want to know that you are more than a conqueror, that you can do it through Jesus Christ, that you are more than able, that you are loved and blessed. And I, as I close, I just want to say a quick prayer. So, Father, Lord God, I come to you through your son, Jesus Christ, Lord God. And I thank you, Lord God, that I was able to stand up here and preach, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that I was able, Lord God, to prepare something, Lord God, even though I didn't prepare for it, Lord God. Father, Lord God, I pray over the homes of these people, Lord God. I pray over their cars, Lord God, over their transportation back, Lord God. And I pray, Lord God, that they understand, that they have an understanding, Lord God, that they are strong, Lord God, when they are together and when they are alone, Lord God, that you are fighting for us, Lord God. Father, Lord God, I pray that they put on the armor of light, Lord God, that they seek your face, Lord God, put a, de a desire in their hearts, give them a hunger and a thirst to draw close to you, Lord God. Father, Lord God, every demonic spirit, Lord God, that's trying to attach or attack them, Lord God. I did not tonight destroy, Lord God, every assignment, Lord God, every plot against these people, Lord God. I did not tonight destroy, I bind down to the feet of Jesus, Lord God. I invite you into tonight, I invite you into their home and into their families. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray, amen. Come on, let's give God a hand of praise.